ChrisWahabiKing.com and welcome to another printer tips and tricks. So now that uh, we've got the printer all built uh, from the other video series, uh, we've had another one where we talked about updating the firmware. Always check to make sure you got the latest uh, uh, update on the firmware for the Marlin and the ramps board. Let's go ahead and talk about software. So you've got the printer built, now how do you use it? Uh, you can think of this uh, a lot like a bubble jet printer you'd buy for your personal computer. Uh, just because you've got the printer, it means you now need software to generate the print file, uh, you know, whether it be a picture or a text document. Uh, you can use multiple different programs to do that. You know, just like you've got Adobe Photoshop, you've got Paint and Windows, you've got, I mean, you can print from any, anything from even Google, you know, right-clicking and selecting print the screen. So uh, lots of software out there. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So I've listed a lot of the software available. If you look in the, the Files tab, we've got a, a little uh, Q&A section on the printer itself. I've got a lot of the software that's compatible with it. The Ramps board with the, uh, the, the Marlin software takes what's called G-Code. There's uh, mainly two main streams of types of 3D printers. One uses a file that is basically just direct uh, commands, meaning that it is directly controlling the printer from the file, meaning it says uh, motor Z take two steps, motor X do this, do that. Uh, where G code is a list of commands that request the printer to do something, meaning the processing is done within the, uh, the, the printer itself. Uh, the onboard computer is, is actually uh, processing the, the data. And that's a lot nicer when you look at uh, uh, different types of software because the software then just generates a generalized G code which is recognized by multiple different machines. So it's a more of like a coordinate system, like it would be a, a, a command like uh, go to X and it would give a, a definition like 1.3 millimeters and Y, X point and Z. And so the machine just says, oh, we need to go to this position based off the position we currently are. It does the calculation internally and it does the moves. So inside the processor on this one, it is actually uh, calculating the number of steps, the accelerations, the ramps and all that other one. Where the other type of file uh, that is used like say like MakerWare and stuff like that is just direct commands where that type of information is being processed on the computer and it generates a file that just literally says do this, do that, do this, do that. It doesn't do any internal processing. G-Code is more universal in the sense that it can be used across a wide number of uh, different software, including industrial, commercial, uh, and milling machines like uh, VMCs, lathes, mills, uh, CNC routers, all you generate uh, um, G-Code. And there's two types of programs you gotta worry about, CAD CAM. So CAD software is where you draw the, the item it is. And there's tons of free ones out there. There are tons of expensive ones like Pro-E, SolidWorks, uh, Rhinoceros 3D is a great one for you know free forming type of different things. Uh, Google SketchUp, and these are all ones that you can generate content, uh, generate with a part itself. But that's a different uh, situation. Well, I'm definitely not going to teach you guys how to use CAD software. That is, people go to college for that type of stuff, depending on to what level you want it. There's lots of good uh, uh, ones like Autodesk One Two Three, you know, that are very intuitive, and there's tons of tutorials on how to draw that content on YouTube available. So go ahead and look at what CAD CAM is best for you. Um, now, for those that aren't wanting the CAD CAM, uh, if you like Thingiverse and, and a bunch of other sites, you can just download uh, files that are absolutely ready to rock and roll, um, especially like Thingiverse. You just go in there and type in FPV and it pulls up thousands of different files people have already made. Lots of websites are doing this. Even like Immersion RC is doing a little printer section where you can uh, upload uh, files that people have generated for like little uh, stands and widgets and clips you know, for immersion products. Uh, if you jump on their website, you can download them and print them right off of those. Uh, so there's lots of content out there. You don't need to necessarily know how to CAD CAM to be into 3D printing. And scaling and doing different things uh, is built into the software, so you don't have to worry about that so much as well. It's very easy and intuitive to do that. Um, so that's CAD. What we're gonna talk about is CAM or slicing software. Now CAM software is what basically writes the G code uh, for this particular printer on uh, explaining how to actually do the print. So we've got a drawing. Uh, in this case, we've got the Terminator skull. Um, this was drawn by somebody and uploaded to Thingiverse, downloaded it from Thingiverse. So the CAM or the slicer uh, program is gonna take this in and say, okay, we're gonna cut it up in a bunch of slices and we know exactly how much we have. We're gonna be able to control things such as infill. Is it gonna be solid? Is it gonna be hollow so it's nice and light? We don't use as much plastic. Uh, a whole bunch of different things. As it as prints higher you know, and things get smaller, we need to slow down so uh, the plastic has time to cool. Are we gonna use fans? What type of plastic are we using? Sounds like a lot of information. It's actually not. It's very easy to use and, and we've narrowed it down uh, to one piece of software that we're gonna recommend that you use. Now there's a bunch of them out there, uh, uh, SkinForge, um, uh, key, uh, Kiss Slicer, uh, Repeater Host, 
which uses different slicing engines and everything. The best one for you to get started in the 3D printing, and, and quite honestly, one of the best ones out there, in my opinion, as far as our slicing engine, is called Cura. Now, Cura is extremely easy to use. It's drag, uh, drag and drop um, uh, configuration in the GUI. It's just awesome. It's a great slicing engine, and it works absolutely perfect for this. You can uh, uh, control the printer, just uh, save it right to an SD card, pop it in the printer, select the print, and just go. So we're gonna talk about Cura. Now, uh, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that down. Um, so go ahead and download the latest version of Cura. I think we're up to about version 15 right now. And so that this tutorial is gonna be based off of that. Uh, let me go ahead and transition over to the computer. I'm gonna assume at this point that uh, you've Googled Cura, C-U-R-A, downloaded the latest version of Cura. What we need to do in Cura is create a printer profile. Essentially, uh, Cura needs to understand how big our printer is uh, and a few other things, does it have a heated print bed and, and things like this. So we gotta check a couple boxes so it understands what printer we're using so it knows how to create the proper G code uh, to match this particular software which we're using, which is Marlin. So let's go ahead and jump on over to that. All right, so I have Cura, the big old C right here on my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and open it up. All right, so this is Cura. So we've got a, uh, a really nice GUI window right over here, uh, which is a, a dynamic box, which is a representation of our printer platform. Depending on the specifications we talk about within the, uh, the printer, it's gonna change, you know, maybe it's got a longer one axis than the other, or Z height. This is a representation of our particular printer. It knows this because I've already pre-configured it on this, but we're gonna assume that this is a fresh load, brand new, we need to add our printer to it. So first thing we're gonna do is take a look right here at the top, uh, top left. Uh, it's gonna have file, tools, machine, expert, and help. The one we need to be concerned with is right there in the middle, machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide over the cursor, click on that, and we're gonna slide right on down. Now as you have uh, multiple mach machines or multiple profiles, and what I mean by profiles is maybe you wanna change out your, your tip or your nozzle on this extruder. Uh, maybe you're gonna have a .3 nozzle for some ultra fine uh, detail. Uh, or a 0.5 for just uh, uber fast printing, you know, uh, larger scale, lower resolution. You can actually set up different profiles for, di uh, for the same printer and just call them something different. It's gonna have them from the drop down right over here onto the box. What we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna assume this is a fresh load, it's not gonna have any printers in there, is create a new one. So right over here, it says add new machine. So I'm gonna slide on that, click on it. And, uh, and it basically says uh, the wizard's gonna help you set it up. Just click next right down here onto the bottom. All right, it's gonna give you a list of pre-configured machines that are already in there. Um, at this point, this machine isn't uploaded to their GUI. So what we need to do is go ahead and click other from the box. I'm gonna click next. And the next screen is gonna give you a couple of different options as far as control, the type of machine, whether it's a, a, you know, a Delta uh, style or standard XYZ. Um, just on the bottom, just click custom. All we need to do is pick a custom profile. All right, and that is it. So this is where we put in the information related to this particular printer. Since we're using G-code, we don't need to put in all the steps and uh, direction and pull up resistor. You know, we don't, all that configuration is done on that uh, update that we did in the last video. Uh, it's all on board here. This is standardized G-code at this point. So all we really needed to put in here is the, the dimensions of our bed, whether we got a heated print bed and, and a few other uh, things. So first thing it asks for is the machine name. You can call it whatever you want, uh, HK3D number one, you know, or HK, and I, I like the, the gnome, since this machine is shipped with a 0.4 nozzle, I'm gonna call it HK3D 0.4, uh, or uh, four, uh, don't put the point in there on the naming nomenclature. So, uh, so HK3D4, uh, indicating 0.4 nozzle on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in there. Of course, I'm at a weird angle, so H, uh, K three D four uh, four. All right. Next one asks for is machine width, depth, and height. So basically, the size of the bed. We already know the printing platform on this is 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters by 100 millimeters. So let's just go ahead and type those sizes right on in there. X and Y are both the same. 150 millimeter. One five zero. Okay, 
Next one is nozzle size. Default is 0.5 millimeters. Uh, this one actually has a little bit higher resolution nozzle, a little bit smaller nozzle, so we get a much finer print, uh, and that is a 0.4 nozzle. So go ahead and change that to 0.4. Don't forget to put the 0.4 in there, uh, and don't put so it's not five millimeters or four millimeters. Uh, so just we're gonna go ahead and change that to four. And heated bed, go ahead and check that. Uh, this does have a heated bed on there, so we'll be able to use those options. The next one is uh, bed center, meaning that the uh, coordinate system is using the bed center uh, as 000. That's not how this printer is set up. This printer is set up just like a standardized CNC machine where we use the, uh, the top corner right over here for zero point. So leave that box unchecked. So from the top, I'm gonna actually, uh, I know I talk fast on these videos and these videos are super long and so I always try to jam everything in there. I'm gonna slow down and make sure everyone understands how to do this. Once you're in Cura, you pick the machine, we're gonna add machine. We're gonna come in here, just click next, next, and then once we get to this uh, custom rep information page, all we're gonna do is put in our name uh, for the profile on this, uh, put anything you want. The size is 150, 150, and 100 millimeters on the Z axis. It's a 0.4 nozzle, and we will have 0.3 and 0.5 nozzles available. Um, and then uh, heated bed, check that one, and the bottom one, zero, zero, leave it unchecked, that's it. So now we have a configuration for this particular printer. Go ahead and click finish, and that's it. So if we come back right over here to the top, uh, on the top row, we've got machine. Go back to machine. We should now have it already marked with a little dot next to it, meaning that printer that we just created is the one selected. I've got other profiles here because I've got other 3D printers. You can click and, and change. So if you change nozzles, it's as simple as sliding up and picking the next one that's maybe the, uh, the, the 0.5 nozzle or something like that in that configuration. So it's done. So now we've got the printer in there. Uh, we've all set, we've got Cura, we've got our printer set up, um, our printer's built. So now how do we make it print? So go ahead and tune in to the next one and what we're gonna do on that one is actually make Cura uh, print and we're gonna wa walk through the quick process of uh, grabbing a file off a of Thingiverse, putting it into Cura, setting up some parameters for different types of uh, material and saving it to an SD card. Uh, as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you guys next time.